It is Islamophobia with a capital I. I can't actually think of anything you can do which might be worse than that. And yet she didn't vote on, you know, perhaps what will be seen as 1930s-ish, you know? Hello and welcome to This Week in Canada. My name is Roberto Wakerel Cruz. With me, as always, and I'm back, actually. I, I was away for a little bit, but N Nico is here as well. Say hey, hello, guys. Nico. Yeah, we bailed Roberto out of prison, uh, and I'm quite happy to have him back, actually. I was getting kind of tired of Matthew, uh, and, and I'm sure you were as well. But we've got an exciting episode planned. Isn't that right, Bobby? It is, actually. Uh, another packed week. So we had to trim it down to just our favorite stories of the week, but it's going to be a good one. And I, everything was fine with me. I got out on bail and uh, we might just settle out of court. So our first story has to do uh, with the Montreal Trudeau Airport, Pierre Elliott Trudeau Airport, and a uh, COVID facility, which uh, a very unfortunate story. And Nico, did you want to just explain a little bit what happened Yeah, I, well, for one, I cannot believe they've named an airport after Pierre Elliott Trudeau. I mean, he's hated in Western Canada, right? But even... Like, like, the Quebecois don't love the guy. So that seems a bit strange to me. But anyway, essentially, this relates to the COVID hotels. So the Trudeau government have been getting a lot of flack recently for how they're dealing with coronavirus. So, you know, we're giving them a bit of flack as well. And one of the sort of political ways out of this is to look really harsh to take a stringent line with coronavirus. And that's been pretty popular everywhere, right? If you look at polls, people prefer tough lockdown policy as opposed to stuff which values, you know, freedom and stuff like that. So yeah. essentially, uh, people come back from holiday. They go into these hotels. They have to quarantine for around three days. Basically, they have to take a test at the airport and they have to stay in these hotels until they test negative, And then they go and quarantine at home. Now, there's no scientific evidence as to why this is actually good. Why can't people quarantine at home? Well, I don't know. That, that hasn't actually been legitimized by the Trudeau government at any point. And lo and behold, firstly, people just haven't been going to the hotels They because they figured out the fine for not going is actually less than paying the price to go to the hotel itself, which just speaks volumes about how shoddy this policy is. And secondly, um, and, and unfortunately, a woman was sexually assaulted in a Montreal hotel. And guess what? She didn't even have a lock. She couldn't lock her room because the government didn't let her for some unbelievably bizarre reason. I mean, it's just a massive mess, isn't it, Roberto? Oh, yeah. No, from, from the start to the beginning, the story is very unfortunate. It was this woman... Uh, who went by simply Sarah. She reported it to the uh, La Presse, which is the big fancy Quebecois newspaper, one of them, uh, where she said she left her hotel room to go get a water bottle. Poor girl didn't have any water in her in her room. Find a water bottle, and on her way back to her room, she bumped across uh, a man by the name of Robert, I can't find the last name right now, of Windsor, Ontario. Uh, but anyway, this yeah, so this poor girl has... Uh, got allegedly sexually assaulted and we only say allegedly because it's we have to it's le legally we have to I'm sure. anyway the what has come of this now is that uh, a bunch of conservative mps federal mps from the conservative party have come out and said that this system this lockdown covid hotel system needs to come to an end and to be honest i can totally see why this thing is mismanaged if you can't stop someone from getting uh, assaulted in this fashion. What is that? Our government's supposed to keep us safe wherever we are while we're in their facilities. So, uh, and, and it's counterintuitive. It makes no sense to pay out of your pocket to stay at these places if you're a traveler. But if you're, I mean, not to go there, but the refugees go to these facilities and they, it comes out of taxpayer pockets. I don't understand what the double standard is there for snowbirds. We're just trying to get back. And there's the actually country. another important the, the, issue the whole, with that in, in the sense that lots of people traveled away from Canada before the lockdown began or before, you know, travel policy was enacted, went to another country, perhaps were visiting relatives or whatever, or even were going to the States or something for work. I don't know. And then overnight, so they can't get back into Canada. And what, because it's so expensive and it's expensive as hell, it goes up to like $2,000 for three nights in like a best Western, like a three star hotel, right? It's ridiculous how expensive it is. And it's created almost a class-based way to re-enter Canada. The very rich can afford this, you know? $2,000, yeah. it's not that much to them. But if you're, you know, a working class guy who has to earn money for his living and, you know, he works for his living, they can't spend this money. It, it, it's, it's bloody tough. And there's so many holes in the policy. 
I mean, we already Sand. talked about the fact that they have deadlocks on their doors. Um, and it's so shady. You're not allowed to say where you are. I don't know why. You can't post about it on social media. You can't take cam or photographs or videos of it. It's really bizarre. Really, really bizarre. And I think for that reason, the Conservatives who are calling for an end to this policy, I think quite rightly, are indignant, just shocked that this really half-botched, half arsed policy ever went forward. What were they thinking? Welcome back. That's Roberto's first time with the new transitions. And from the look of his face, he's enjoying it very much. Uh, well done to James for that. In this topic, in this next topic, we're going to talk about a video that the Conservative leader, Erin O'Toole, made. You could tell it wasn't great quality. There was no real production going into it. It wasn't like an election ad. It was just a video which he thought was funny that he posted to his Twitter, or I think someone else posted it of him. You know, no effort, just having a laugh. But there was one Liberal yeah. MP who didn't like this very much, did he, Bobby? No. So before we get started, why don't we just roll the clip so that everyone knows. It's only 18 seconds long, and apparently this got it trending on Twitter. I mean, people st pretended to care about this, so we'll roll it. Prime Minister's office, or at least Justin Trudeau's office, if you get behind my campaign and we win, we're going to move Justin Trudeau out of this office into a more appropriate office for Justin Trudeau. We've got something lined up already for him. <laughs> to be here in advance. Uh, yeah, so I mean, the most mild joke of all time. <laughs> it's one of the least offensive jokes that a politician could make. It's so milquetoast, and to be honest, it's not an issue. So uh, Liberal MP Sean Fraser tweeted this, said, being an MP is a job for grown-ups. Behavior like this detracts from our ability to have real debates about issues that matter to the people who live in our communities. I don't know what that even yeah. means. Uh, being a, Also, being an MP oftentimes involves just howling <laughs> at other politicians from across the room. And so I don't if, know if you may also remember, his leader, Justin Trudeau, um, you know, he went to India and dressed up in their traditional garb and, like, falls downstairs and stuff for fun. So I, I don't... And, and do you remember that moustache you used to have? Let's get a photo of that when you look like one of the musketeers. Get, get oh, yeah, but no. But this Aaron O'Toole isn't acting responsibly here. By the way, uh, Sean Fraser, the guy whose tweet Bobby mentioned, the Liberal MP, is the MP for Central Nova, which is the constituency that Peter McKay would have run in uh, if it weren't for Aaron O'Toole. So perhaps that's some cosmic justice going on there. And uh, just really quick, also, the blackface... Uh, he, <laughs> the blackface wasn't good. Just the amount that Trudeau <laughs> dresses up is super weird when he goes to Alberta. I know you're supposed to wear a cowboy hat, but he wears it in such a, I don't know, girly way. <laughs> it's no, no offense to the ladies out there. You know, I love the ladies, but yeah. he wears it like a girl. And uh, when, you know, when he goes mm. to the reservations and stuff, he wears the big headdresses. It, it, it just rubs me the wrong way. The amount this guy is like a child. And if I have to hear, this is unrelated, but if I have to hear Trudeau in Parliament answer a question with from the very beginning one more time it's like it's like the pre-roll at a star wars in a star wars movie and it has the scrolling text his answers are driving me up a wall to get back to aaron o'toole this joke it, i i don't understand how twitter selects what trends I, I don't know if it's directly related to how many tweets people are tweeting about it i can't imagine enough people would care about this to get it trending. It's such a loser joke. Yeah. It's a fine joke. And so that, I thought it was quite funny. And it was nice to see Aaron O'Toole actually enjoy it. You know, I think it was Roberto's tweet. He said, this is the most personable I've ever seen Aaron O'Toole, to quote my friend Bobby over here. And he's right, you know? The, the, the Aaron O'Toole hasn't been personal enough. And here he is attempting to be the guy he actually is. You know, Roberto and I have met him. He's actually quite, quite normal, believe it or not. Yeah, so, you know, it's just weird. It's just liberals speaking in platitudes yet again, just being annoying. Who who knows these people? Does anyone know a liberal? I just, they're, they're really bizarre creatures. Joyless. Yeah. Just joyless, humorless people, and only when politically convenient, you know? Yeah. They can go ahead and call Donald Trump orange loser whenever they want. But as soon as Aaron O'Toole just cracks a joke about a toilet being Justin Trudeau's next office, the whole internet shuts down. I'm tired of it. Let's move on. <laughs> Thank you.
Give a big shout out to the guys at the Post Millennial for this podcast who have created this very nice This Week in Canada t-shirt. As you can see, it has our big logo on it. It says mm. with uh, Bobby and Nico at the bottom. We just excluded Granger. Uh, <laughs> we don't like him. We don't like, <laughs> don't like him that much. So you can go to the links below. Click. You can buy a t-shirt. We are going to uh, create women's t-shirts, fitted t-shirts. You know, If you have a very feminine physique as well, you can also just buy a women's t-shirt if you like the, yeah. the, the, to expose some bosom. Uh, our next segment has to <laughs> for our great number of female viewers. We've been yeah, our very high of percent of our viewership is, is young, hot females. Uh, so <laughs> let's, they are. So let's move on to our last and final segment, and it has to do with a genocide. So nothing really to laugh about there. Specifically, the one being committed by the Chinese government against the ethnic minority. Officially uh, now, at least in Canada's uh, rule book. Because yeah, uh, yeah we, the House of Commons went to a vote, and everyone voted in favor of this besides the liberal cabinet who i believe mm. there's something like 40 but then the next day our favorite hypocrite Catherine mckenna goes on twitter uh and you know she's a hypocrite for a number of reasons my, my favorite obviously is that she ate a dog and keeps telling people to adopt them when she was <laughs> it's just hilarious but uh she went on Twitter and talked about Islamophobia, an instance of Islamophobia that took place in Edmonton, I think, over <laughs> the weekend, or maybe it was a week ago. Uh, and she used this... Here, let's put the tweet up on the screen, basically. It, it basically just goes, Islamophobia is unacceptable, which, you know, cool, good enough, sure. But the gall, or just the cluelessness, to tweet this <laughs> and abstain from a vote... Uh, about a genocide of Muslims, which has to be the most Islamophobic thing ever. It is Islamophobia with a capital I. I can't actually think of anything you can do which might be worse than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yet she didn't vote on, you know, perhaps what will be seen as 1930s-ish, you know? I, I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's tough to tell. And... I mean, the stories that come out of Xinjiang, the province where the Uyghurs live, is are dreadful, really quite horrific stuff. But, I mean, the, the lack of courage, the spinelessness of the fact that they abstained from this joke, basically to placate Beijing apparatchiks because they're so scared about them. You know, it, it's, it's unbelievable. It's shocking, in fact. I, I can't imagine another government in the Western world doing that. And Justin Trudeau happily did it and thought this would be like the best way to navigate the situation. But he hasn't pleased China. And to the rest of the rest of the world, and probably to Muslims, I imagine, the guy just looks like a total and utter wimp, you know? What a distasteful. That was a packed episode of This Week in Canada. I'm very happy to be back. For those who were concerned that I had went to prison, I'm not gonna assume that was a race thing or anything. <laughs> Um, and it just celebrated my birthday. I turned 25. So I'm officially, 25. I'm officially wow. in my uh, mid twenties. So, yeah. um, yeah. So thank you very much for viewing again. You should go and check out our t-shirts. We have them. They're in the store in the link below. You should give us a subscription. You should give us a like, uh, you should go check out our old videos. See what was going on in the zeitgeist of five weeks ago. Nico, do you have anything to add here? No, just that, you know, I appreciate all of you so much. Thank you for watching. Did you guys see uh, last week where we got 60,000 viewers? That's because we hit the trending uh, and we got a bunch of liberals on it who I think were just very, very confused as to why we're up there with CTV and CBC. <laughs> got to two millennials just talking about sort of conservative issues. But that was lovely. And, uh, and I suppose I'll see you next week.